For decades, the story of the Filipino people sounded simple. Textbooks said their ancestors arrived in neat waves, farmers from Taiwan sailing south around 4,000 years ago, bringing rice, pottery, and language, a clean migration, a clean beginning. But that story was never complete because hidden inside Filipino DNA is something far older, far stranger, and far more complex than anyone imagined. A genetic story that doesn't move in straight lines, but in loops, echoes, and forgotten crossings. Modern science has revealed something shocking. The Philippines is not just a stop along human migration routes, it is one of the deepest crossroads in human history a place where multiple human species once walked, where ancient bloodlines merged, vanished, and survived in fragments. Some of those fragments are so old they predate modern humans. Others come from civilizations long erased by time, and some should not exist at all, yet they do. This is why Filipino DNA is considered one of the strangest on Earth. To understand why, we have to go back far before kingdoms, before writing, before even the idea of Filipino existed at all. Long before the islands had names, before maps or myths, humans were already here. In 2007, inside Kalau Cave in northern Luzon, archaeologists uncovered a tiny bone, a foot bone barely 61 millimeters long. At first, it seemed insignificant, but it belonged to something entirely unexpected, a previously unknown human species. They named it Homo luzonensis. This small-bodied human walked the Philippines more than 50,000 years ago. It had curved fingers and toes, suggesting climbing abilities, yet teeth and bones unlike any known species. It wasn't fully modern human, it wasn't Neanderthal, it wasn't Denisovan, it was something else entirely. The discovery shattered the idea that Southeast Asia was merely a corridor for human migration. The Philippines wasn't a passageway, it was a destination and possibly a crossroads of evolution itself. And Homo luzonensis wasn't alone. In Palawan, archaeologists uncovered the remains of Tabone Man, dating back at least 30,000 years. These early humans hunted, cooked, and lived in caves long before recorded history. But bones tell only part of the story. DNA tells the rest. Modern Filipinos carry genetic traces of Denisovans, a mysterious archaic human group known mostly from fragments found in Siberia. Yet the highest Denisovan ancestry in the world appears not in Siberia, but in the Philippines, especially among indigenous groups like the Agta and Eta. This means ancient humans didn't just pass through the islands, they lived here, interbred here, and left descendants who still walk the land today. The Philippines wasn't peripheral, it was central. The geography of the Philippines shaped everything. Even during the Ice Age, when sea levels were lower, many islands were never connected by land. Deep ocean trenches forced early humans to cross open water. That meant one thing, the people who reached these islands were already skilled seafarers tens of thousands of years before civilization supposedly began. These early Filipinos hunted deer and wild pigs, gathered shellfish, and learned to read the sea. They moved with monsoons, tides, and seasons. Survival required intelligence, adaptation, and memory. Their world was harsh typhoons, earthquakes, volcanoes, yet they endured. Over thousands of years, isolated groups developed independently, languages split, cultures diverged. This is why today the Philippines has over 180 living languages, one of the highest concentrations on Earth. Each language is a fossil, a remnant of an ancient separation. Some groups vanished entirely, Others survived in mountain strongholds or forest interiors, and through it all, genes accumulated, 
some ancient, some foreign, some completely unexpected. The Philippines became a genetic mosaic long before the modern world existed. Around 4,000 years ago, a new movement began. From Taiwan came a wave of people unlike any before them, the Austronesians. They were master sailors, farmers, and innovators. They built boats that could ride ocean swells instead of fighting them. They didn't just migrate, they expanded. With them came rice agriculture, pigs, chickens, pottery, and language. Their tongues would eventually stretch from Madagascar to Easter Island, the widest language family on Earth. When they reached the Philippines, they didn't find empty land. They met the descendants of the first hunter-gatherers, and instead of erasing them, something remarkable happened. They mixed. Genetically, culturally, linguistically, the result was a fusion society. Modern Filipinos carry both lineages, the deep ancestry of Ice Age foragers and the seafaring legacy of Austronesian navigators. The proportions vary by region. Mountain groups often retain more ancient ancestry. Coastal populations show stronger Austronesian influence. This blending created the foundations of Filipino identity. Rice farming alongside forest knowledge boats and fishing alongside hunting traditions, and language became the glue. Tagalog, Cebuano, Ilocano, all descended from Austronesian roots shaped by local tongues and history. The Philippines became a cultural engine radiating influence outward into the Pacific. But the story doesn't stop with Austronesians. Genetic evidence reveals something even stranger. Connections between Filipinos and distant Pacific Islanders, Micronesians, Polynesians, even groups thousands of kilometers away. This suggests ancient back and forth movement across the ocean, not just one way migration. The seas were highways, not barriers. Archeological finds support this. Jade from Taiwan, obsidian from far islands, pottery styles shared across vast distances. These weren't accidents, they were networks. Long before empires, people traded, married, and traveled across open water. Some stayed, some returned, some disappeared into history, leaving only DNA behind. The Philippines sat at the center of this web, even Chinese and Arab genetic traces appear centuries before European arrival, hinting at early trade and intermarriage long forgotten by written history. Blood remembers what books forget. Then came the age of empires. In 1565, Spanish galleons arrived. With them came conquest, Christianity, and connection to the wider world. The Philippines became the bridge between Asia and the Americas. Mexican soldiers, Chinese traders, Spanish settlers, all mixed with local populations. New identities formed, new bloodlines emerged. Catholicism spread, but it blended with older beliefs. Saints merged with spirits, rituals adapted, faith became Filipino. Yet not everyone was conquered. In the mountains of Luzon, in the forests of Mindanao, communities resisted. Groups like the Ifugao, Kalinga, and Agta preserved lifeways far older than empire. Genetic studies show they retain some of the highest levels of ancient ancestry on Earth, including Denisovan traces. They are living time capsules. While colonial cities changed, these communities carried humanity's deep past forward. So why is Filipino DNA so strange? Because it is layered. Because it contains echoes of extinct humans. Because it records migrations no history book ever wrote down. Because it connects Ice Age hunters, oceanic explorers, Asian traders, and global empires into one lineage. No single origin, no single story. The Filipino people are not the product of one migration, but of many converging worlds. 
In every genome is a map of survival. In every face, a history older than civilization. The Philippines is not a footnote in human history. It is a living archive of humanity itself. And that is why Filipino DNA is not just unique, it is one of the strangest, richest, and ancient genetic tapestries on Earth.